How do you calculate hard integrals numerically? This is often a problem in Bayesian statistics. Why? Because when in Bayesian statistics you are trying to calculate a posterior. And the posterior is equal to the likelihood times the prior divided by the evidence. And the evidence is just the integral of the numerator. It's the integral of the likelihood times the prior over all the values of the parameter. And quite often in Bayesian statistics, this integral is intractable. So in this video, I will show three methods for calculating uh, this integral or any other hard integrals that you might come across. And the first method, um, I will call this method the Riemann sum. Okay, so imagine that we have some function e to the power of minus x squared. And we want to calculate the integral of that function, meaning we want to calculate the area beneath this function. And so in the first method, what you do is you divide x into many, many, many um, small intervals that are equally spaced. So you divide x. And for each point, you calculate uh, the value of f of x. So for this point over here, you calculate f of x. And for this point, you calculate f of x. And for this point, f of x, etc., etc. And then you calculate the area of the column given by the length of f of x and the length of the interval. So what I mean is if this is the length of the interval and this is the length of f of x, you calculate this column over here. And then you calculate this column over here. Then you calculate this column over here, this column over here, etc., etc. And if you do this for all of the values of x that you chose, eventually you will get a pretty good approximation to f of x. And of course, as you take more points that are shorter distance apart, the approximation will become better and better. And luckily, using computers, you can actually calculate this integral. Um, it's not so hard to calculate this integral and to get a good approximation. And this is called a numerical computation of an integral. So this is one way you can do it. Another way that you can do this is with rejection sampling. Now rejection sampling is a Monte Carlo method. And what it means is that you were using uh, random draws from some distribution. So once again, we have the, the function that we are looking for its integral. And in rejection sampling, you use another distribution that you know and that you can calculate its integral. And using that, in, uh, using that distribution, you try to bound the integral that you're looking for. You try to bound the function. Now, the integral you're looking for, it can be either less than 1 and it can also be greater than 1. And any distribution that you will use will always be 1. Its integral will always be 1. So what you need to do is you need to um, bound the integral you are looking for, bound the function that you are looking for, up to some constant. So let's say uh, I have here the value 5 and the value minus 5, and I take, and this here is 1, because e to the power of 0 is 1, and I want to take the uniform distribution, the continuous uniform distribution between minus 5 and 5. Well. I know the value of this. The value of this will be one tenth. So the distribution would look something like this. For every point between minus five and five, I would get a one tenth chance of getting it. Okay, but as you can see, this distribution doesn't bound the actual function that we want to cal calculate its integral. So we need to multiply this uh, distribution by some constant. And the constant we will choose is obviously 10. If we multiply this distribution by 10, 
we will get this thing over here. Now this area does bound the integral between minus 5 and 5. Okay, so this is the first step that you do in rejection sampling. The next step is that you draw from this distribution that you do know. You draw from the uniform distribution. And you draw all kinds of uh, samples. Say so here, here, you will get a lot in the middle and less apart. And for each one of those draws, you calculate a ratio. You calculate the ratio of this area over here and all of the area over here. So you calculate basically the length of f of x and you calculate the constant times, let's call the easy, easy uh, distribution g of x. Okay, so you calculate f of x divided the constant times g of x. So here it's, in our case, it's 10. And this will give you a number between 0 and 1. Why just until 1? Because you bound the, the integral. So f f x divided by c times g of x will be at most 1, and sometimes not even 1. Now, for each value that you took, you calculate this ratio, and then you draw another uh, value you draw from a uniform distribution between 0 and 1 and this will be all kinds of values. It can be 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 0 0.3, 0 0.345, yeah, and if this number that you draw will be less than the ratio, you accept the point. If the number will be above that ratio, you reject the point. And you do this for a lot, a lot of samples, and in the end you get a pretty good ratio of all the points that you accepted and rejected. And, and this ratio is equal to the ratio of the, the area of the integral that you are looking for to the entire area of the bounding, into, of the bounding function. But we can always calculate the area of the bounding function. We took a, a distribution which is always, its integral is always 1, and we multiply it times some constant. So the area here, we know it. We know it's 1, which is this length, times 10. So the area here is 10. It's exactly equal to the constant. And so what we do after we draw a lot of uh, samples and we get a certain ratio, the integral that you are looking for is always equal to the ratio times the constant. Now I want to show you that this doesn't have to be, the, the distribution you choose doesn't have to be uniform. Okay, so let's do it again. Okay, so we have here our function that we are looking for, e to the power of minus x squared. And let's say we use uh, a normal distribution. This over here is almost the standard normal distribution, but let's say we use the actual standard, standard normal distribution. Um, so this at no, the actual normal standard distribution would look something like this. Sorry for my drawing. Yeah, wait a minute. Okay. Now, this doesn't bound the function, so we multiply it by some constant. And let's say we found that constant, and in the end, it will be something like this. Okay? So, this is just c times the normal. Okay, and we do exactly the same. We draw from the normal distribution, the standard normal distribution, and we get all kinds of points. We get here, 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 here. Um, and for each point, we calculate the same ratio. We calculate the ratio, let's say, of this area, the, of f of x, to the ratio of this, the c times g of x. And for each of this ratio, again, we draw from a normal distribution. And if u is below this ratio, we accept the point. And if it's above, 
we reject that point. And once we do it for a lot, a lot, a lot of examples, in the end, we get the ratio of all the points we accepted to all the points in general that we drew. And again, the integral that we are looking for will be equal to that ratio times the constant. Now, just to make sure that you understand, this ratio is not equal to this ratio. This ratio is done uh, for each point individually, you calculate this ratio. This ratio over here, I mean, this is the ratio of all the points that you accepted to all the points that you drew in general. Now, the third method I want to show you is called important sampling. And important sampling is basically a neat trick that you can do. Remember, you are trying to look to find the integral of this function over here, some function f of x. Now, now it is always true that this is equal to f of x times some other distribution, or some other function g of x, divided by g of x, because this over here is always equal to 1. And let me write this in a different way. This is equal to g of x, f of x, divided by g of x, dx. And this, you could look at it as if this is the mean, according to g of x, of some function f of x divided by g of x. Now, how do you estimate mean like this? Well, what you do is you draw from g of x and you calculate the sample average of the function that you are looking for, in this case, f of x divided by g of x. So you calculate the mean of f of xi divided by g of xi when you draw the x's from g of x. So each xi is drawn from g of x i. Okay, so this is pretty neat. We look for an integral, and in the end, all we have to do is calculate an average, which is quite cool. Now, I want to switch to Wolfram Alpha to see what is the exact value of this integral. We can see that the exact value is the square root of pi, which is 1.77. Okay, and here I want to show you graphically again. This is the function that we are looking for, e to the power of minus x squared, and we are looking for the integral of this function. And here he is... Um, the distribution, the uniform distribution between minus 5 and 5 times 10. So we can see this is over here. This is how it looks like. And this is the standard normal distribution times some constant, times 2.6, in order for it to bound the function that we are looking for its integral. Okay, now I want to switch into R and show you how to do everything in R. So this is the function that we are looking for. And this is the first method that I told you, the numerical method or the Riemann sum. And this is the length of the interval. I'll call it d of x. And here I create a sequence between minus 5 and 5, whose length are d of x. And why minus 5 and 5? We just assume that below the value of minus 5 and above the values of 5, the function is so small that it's basically 0. Now we calculate the value f of x for each of those points that we chose, and we calculate the columns. This is a column, for, and we calculate this for every point that we chose. So this is basically a vector of columns, and we sum all those columns together, and we get 1.772454. Uh, remember that the actual uh, integral is square root of pi, and we can see that up to six decimal points, this is exactly the same. Next, let's do rejection sampling. Um, the first example, we use uniform distribution. So we randomly draw from a uniform distribution between minus 5 and 5. Uh, we know that the constant that we need is 10 in order to bound the function. We calculate the ratio between f of x and the bounding uh, function. Then for each point, we draw from a uniform distribution between 0 and 1. And the value that we got we decide if it's below the ratio for that point or above the ratio for that point. And here in indices, we will get a, a vector of true or false. And we will sum all the true values, meaning all the values that we accepted, and divide it by all of the values that we sampled. So 
this will give us the ratio of the amount of points that we accepted to the total amount of points that we draw. And we can see that this ratio is about 0 0.188, so not very big. And then the value of the integral is simply the ratio times the constant, and we see we got 1.88, which is not amazing, but it's also pretty close to the 1.77 we saw before. And we can do this again, and this time we get maybe a better approximation. And of course, the more points we use, the better the approximation. Now let's do the same with the normal distribution. So it's exactly the same, only that instead of drawing from the uniform distribution, we draw from the uh, normal distribution, and that our constant at this time is 2.55. The rest is exactly the same, and here we got that the approximation to the integral is 1.7595. Now I say approximation, but these methods, if you use enough points, they will converge to the actual exact sum that you are looking for. Lastly, let's go over important sampling. So in important sampling, let's say we used the nor standard normal distribution as our easy distribution, as g of x. So we draw from this distribution. And for each point that we drew, we calculate the ratio between f of x, the integral that we are looking for, divided by the g of x at that point. And then we simply calculate the mean of all the values that we drew. And we can see again, it's 1.77, so very, very close to the value of the integral, to the true value of the integral. And those are the three methods that I wanted to show in this video.